So these are peanut beetle larvae that we have harvested. And we are going to come and feed some fish with them. There they are. Let's see who wants to take it. Oh, they're not too sure about it. There they go. starts taking them, they all start running up and taking them. In the fish keeping hobby, there are a variety of live foods that you can keep and raise to feed to your fish for an extra natural boost. A lot of fish keepers and breeders like live foods for the potential, you know, natural instinct it's going to bring to the fish. Now on our channel here, we've done a couple live food cultures and teaching you how to keep those. We've done baby brine shrimp, you know, the live baby brine that you hatch every day kind of a thing if you're consistent with it. We have done things like vinegar eels, which is a set it and literally forget about it until it comes time to harvest. And we've even done micro worms, which is also that set it and forget it tactile thing, each coming with their variety of pros and cons, each coming with their challenges. But tonight we are gonna go into a new type of live food which is probably the most interesting to keep and one of the highest protein sources of a live food you can feed to your fish. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Trent Weldon with Well Done Tanks. And like we talked about, we're doing another live food tonight. And these are, it's one of these things that I was able to sneak past the wife until I started filming this video and she realized what I had, on, had out on her kitchen counter. But if you can get these past your significant other, this provides kind of a fun science project effect while also giving a proper live food to feed to your fish. And if you have things like you know, lizards and other you know, reptilian lizards, geckos, also make a great food source for those. So it's a double whammy depending on what kind of you know, animals you're keeping. We're gonna focus primarily on the fish side. And what we are talking about tonight is we are gonna set up a large culture of peanut beetles. Now I've been very fortunate that uh, Matt, who is mountaintop puffer, mountaintop puffer keeper, excuse me, he was very kind and generous and sent us out not only two, but three starter cultures for us to make our own culture. And I'm gonna combine all three starter, all three cultures into one large culture to get that going. And then at a later time, I'll split off you know, smaller cultures to keep even for sale or to, you know, branch out into the hobby to give back to the community. But also just in case my main culture crashes, we'll have backup cultures. So I want to go through the step-by-step -step process of what you're going to need to properly set up a peanut beetle culture and kind of talk about why these things are so interesting to keep. So as you saw from the beginning, you can set these cultures up in small, you know, containers. These are the ones that have the felt or the, how do we call that? I'm gonna call it kind of felt on top to give her fruit fly cultures. So these have worked great. Matt also sent me one in a small, you know, Tupperware container. Then what we're gonna be setting it up in though is a larger Rubbermaid container, Rubbermaid tote. So I bought a pack of these at Walmart for just a couple dollars. Nothing, you know, expensive. You don't need anything expensive. I've even seen large cultures done in big totes. But for tonight's example, and for the honestly, the amount that I'm gonna be keeping, we're gonna start off with uh, one tote. I have a second identical tote, just in case I wanna make another large culture out of this. And then you're gonna need the lid that comes with it. Uh, from there, you are going to need uh, one potato. This is actually what's going to feed your culture. You are gonna need some uh, oats. I just bought the uh, Quaker oats, the, the plain, you get the plain Jane oats. That's gonna be part of your substrate, base layer. <laughs> we'll say we'll say substrate because we're a fish channel. And then the most important thing is you are going to need your peanuts. 
Now it's important that you get whole peanuts and it's important they are unsalted. These were difficult for me to find and ironically, I was able to find them at Tractor Supply if you're in the United States and they sold, this is the smallest bag they had and they also sold like a, a 20 pound bag. We're not, we're not quite there yet. So that is what you're going to need to get this started. It's very simple. It's very cheap. Probably the hardest thing to find is gonna be a starter culture of peanut beetles. Uh, if you are interested in keeping this culture for yourself though, reach out to me. You can message me on Instagram, you can email me and we can discuss setting you up with your own culture. I, I would like to give back to the community as you know, Mountaintop Puffer Keeper was very generous in sending these out to us. Okay, starting off, we're gonna need our container, we're gonna need our lid. Now we're gonna need to drill, poke, cut, whatever you wanna do, some air holes in this container, but you need to make sure that they're not big enough for the beetles to crawl through. Now I've not seen any beetle climb up the plastic, but it's just kind of a just in case scenario. So to speed things up, I have a drill with the smallest and finest bit that I can get. And we're literally just going to drill some holes. Now I'm sure the perfectionists out there, those with uh, you know, OCD or want to murder me right now as I'm just, I'm, I'm not as clean and efficient as Matt was in drilling his holes. Is that even gonna focus? Like you can tell that, you know, this is a military man that did this right here. Corner is beautiful. Me, nah, we're just going for it. So we're gonna do the other side of the lid now and then we'll continue forward. So the holes in the lid are going to serve two purposes. One, bring air into your culture, and two, it's going to help regulate the humidity in your culture. So me and Matt have been having some fun discussions of, he lives in a very dry, high altitude climate, and down here in Texas, I'm in a very you know low altitude, high humidity climate, but so far it hasn't affected the peanut beetles in any way. So now that you've got that done on your lid, we're going to move up to actually setting the container up for your peanut, your peanut beetle culture. So setting up your container for the culture, this is where the oats come into play, is we're first gonna set down, oh, I always just poured that all over the counter. We're gonna set down in half of this container a fairly thick-ish layer of oats. Um, this is gonna kind of be a medium for the peanut beetles to, you know, lay eggs in different things, but that's honestly where the, the peanuts come into play. Put a little more on this side. So we're gonna kinda, we're gonna cover the whole bottom portion of this, but one half has more. Now the other half here, we are going to put in the peanuts. And by putting the peanuts here, how does this open? Oh, come on, it's a little zipper tab, isn't it? Oh, that was satisfying. Okay. <laughs> so again, these are the unsalted whole peanut. So I would not recommend, maybe, I don't know, maybe you can go to Texas Roadhouse and steal a bucket of them. Maybe even Texas Roadhouse will sell you some. I don't know, I don't remember if they're even unsalted or not. But we're gonna lay down quite a few peanuts on this side. And what I've noticed here, and what the peanut beetles will do, is the adults will burrow into the peanut and lay their eggs inside the peanut. And then when the larvae hatch, this is actually what they're going to eat is the peanut inside of this. And now when you get ready to feed your fish with the larvae, you'll actually crack open a peanut and you'll find the larvae in there. Now there's one more thing we're gonna to add to this as well though. That's also where I found um, some larvae there as well. But the oats will help regulate humidity Gonna keep moisture in. And we got a large amount of peanuts in there. And it looks like I've got another, a good amount of peanuts here to start a second culture with in the future. So now this is set up for your culture. This honestly is set up for your culture. And I probably could have done less peanuts because we're gonna bring all three cultures into one container here. But what you're gonna need next is to feed your culture. Now we need to feed this culture. Potato. 
raw potato is what me and Matt have found to be the best thing to feed these peanut beetles. And in our, I'm going to say his testing, he passed on the information to me that one slice of potato per culture and rotating it out once a week or every other week, depending on how kind of moldy it gets in this, we're going to keep an eye on it is the best way we have found this. Two slices of potato seems to be too much. One is kind of that happy medium. <laughs> it's just one slice of potato, lay it on the culture, and then your culture will take care of it from there. Now this, this is literally all you do to set up a peanut beetle culture. Now we're gonna take one of our cultures here, the starter cultures that Matt was so generous to send us. And you can, I don't know if you can really totally see that there. All the adults running around there. So this is the old potato. This is the potato he had in his culture. Definitely time to change it out. And then these are the adults. Now something that me and Matt have talked about and that he cautioned, but we're still not 100% sure on it, is these adult beetles are actually toxic to feed to fish. Um, there is, I'll put, a, I'll put a, a notation on what it is. They, re they release a certain chemical of some kind that they say is harmful to live animals that do eat it and ingest it. I cannot say for certain if that's true or not because I haven't tested it. So something I do want to do, oh, there's a large group of them, large group of adults right there. There's even a few larvae down here of what you could feed your fish. And there's definitely, they get much larger what you could feed. But I want to do testing and not to be inhumane, but I want to do testing to truthfully tell you a confident answer if feeding adult beetles is toxic to a live fish, uh, that'll be a later video, later testing, and we'll do some, you know, uh, you know, viewer discretion advice kind of a thing there, depending on what the outcome is. But yeah, so we're gonna remove this old potato, brush off all of the adult beetles here into this new container. Come on. There we go. Okay. And you can definitely tell where they've been munching on this. So we'll discard that. And then I'm just going to take this old, this starter culture, and we're just going to lay it right over the top of this. Get a nice starting culture in there. And I think. Furthermore, because I have two other cultures here, what I may do is we are going to potentially, I think we're going to add the, well, we're going to add the smaller of the two cultures, and then I'm actually going to leave this third culture as my backup, and we may start another culture with that here, because that was a fairly large culture, but we'll do that, and we'll do that after the video here, so you know what we're talking about here, but... That is how you set up a peanut beater, peanut beetle culture. Say that three times fast. Very simple, very cost effective, and with proper care, you know, changing out your potato once a week, every other week, keeping humidity regulated in this. This will run for a very long time with no to low maintenance and give you ample supply for your fish food. So I'm not going to harvest from this for probably two to four weeks. Just let the larvae keep cooking in here, you know, get a good colony going, but you do want to regulate it because you want to, you know, keep some adults in here and some things to feed off there. But that is the full setup on the peanut beetle culture. There is your full tutorial on setting up a peanut beetle culture. Now with the, the way that the adults bury themselves into a peanut, lay their eggs and hatch those eggs out the larvae and that's what they eat. And cracking open a peanut is how you're gonna harvest a good amount of larvae. That's what's fascinating to me in this little low key science experiment. It's also gonna give you ample food source for your fish. So if you found this video valuable, consider hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing to this channel because this is our one, two, three, fourth live culture we've done on this channel. And now that we're getting ready to build our third rendition of a fish room, we're going to have a lot more projects up and coming and different things, different tips and tricks to help feed your fish. But also leave me a comment down below if you've had experience using and keeping peanut beetles. 
I'm interested to really test this theory that feeding adult beetles is toxic. So if you have insight on that, please let me know. And if you have insight on better ways to keep peanut beetles, or if you how you've kept your peanut beetles, how long has your culture been going, I always like hearing from your experience and what you have going on. So guys, thank you very much for joining me on this one, and we'll see you guys in the next one.